Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, today in this lecture we are going to uh, start a new topic that is in the syllabus equality. Uh, we are going to have three lectures on equality and today we are going to focus basically on um, this introductory part of equality where we are going to discuss different forms of equality. And in the second part of today's lecture we will be focusing on equity and egalitarianism and how it is connected to this idea of equality. And in the next lecture also we will begin with uh, this idea of equal equity and egalitarianism and then move on to discuss equality of opportunity and so on. So, uh, this uh, concept of equality in a political discourse is of central importance. And uh, this concept is there from the very beginning when human beings began to organize their collective life. Depending upon the nature of their community in terms of size or a scale, this idea of equality also underwent a, a number of changes. So, in earlier time when the community was a smaller with a small number of people and it is based on caste uh, or kinship relationship the practices of equality within that caste was very different and how it relates to the other communities based on other kinship or other community ties and so on. In the modern times when the scale or size of community has grown enormously, the people from different groups, different castes, different ethnicity or other social, cultural and economic backgrounds now, to ensure that they all are treated equally is a kind of uh, challenging task. And thereby, in modern times what we see, the discussion on equality, at least in the formal, legal and political sense, is by and large universally accepted. So, in every modern nation state, all the member of that nation state is treated, at least in the formal sense, legal sense equally and this treatment of each member equally is not contested only in the substantive sense when we actually try to examine how individuals in a particular nation are actually treated in their day to day life what are the conditions of their existence and whether that conditions of existence prevent them from being treated equally at par with the other members of the community is something which makes this realization of equality a problematic thing and then many scholars and thinkers have argued about how to move beyond uh, the formal legal notion of equality to a more substantive notion of equality to make this uh, equality more realizable for every individual or every members in the society. Now, the other part of this question is then why do we need equality? Is there any connection or relationship between equality as a political ideal and the other uh, political ideals such as justice, liberty, efficiency and so on. So, these are some of the aspects that is related to equality which we are going to discuss over the course of these three lectures on equality. So, the concept of equality is then fundamental concept in normative political theory. So, in the introductory lecture we have discussed about different characteristic, different nature of political theory. One of the significant uh, aspect of political theory is its normative nature and because it is normative in nature, 
it is subject to multiple interpretation and often at times contradictory um, interpretation because the values, norms that is at the base of any kind of interpretation or understanding of a political concept differs from people to people, society to society and therefore it applies equally to the concept that we are going to discuss today that is equality. So, although it is very fundamental at least in the modern social political organization, the concept of equality is of paramount importance in the sense that all the communities, every single member of that community wants to be treated equally and if they are treated unequally or there is some uh, differential treatment or partial treatment, there are a lot of tensions in different societies. So, in our own society, we think Dalits or excluded, marginalized community demanding their rights, queer rights or women rights in different uh, societies or human rights or animal rights and so on. So, these courses tell us is a reflection of the aspiration among different groups, different members of a particular group towards this uh, equal treatment. And this equal treatment makes this, uh, this aspiration for equal treatment makes this concept very central to the whole normative political theory in political science. However, this centrality or fundamental nature of this concept is also one of the most complex as we proceed in this lecture we will come to know how and why this concept is so complex. So, this is one of the most complex and also essentially contested concepts. Essentially contested concepts means there are different theorization, different understanding or interpretation of these concepts argued by many thinkers. And these are not just different only in degree, at times it also appear to be contradictory to each other which cannot be reconciled and so on. So, the nature of this concept is then also essentially contested. So, whether equality is desirable or not, should we compromise uh, liberty for equality and so on. These are some of the debates which makes this uh, concept essentially contested. So, uh, this uh, complex or essentially contested nature of equality makes any attempt to define it precisely what is equality and if we agree to have equality, uh, what kind of equality and equality of what? These are some of the questions which is not easy to have uh, a singular or precise definition of. So, it is very difficult to define precisely what equality is. Equality as a political concept however, implies that people with similar attributes should be treated equally. So, that is a very fundamental uh, maxim in political discourse which is based on the idea that equality implies that everyone should be treated equally. But that may not be necessarily a just or fair principle to have if a society which is unequal or which is fundamentally unequal in nature or different sections in the society requires different needs. In that condition, if we have laws or if we treat all of them equally, the outcome will not be equal. So, the fundamental premise of equality is to treat everyone equally who are of similar attributes. But if the society is hierarchical or graded or there are different um, sections unequal in attributes or uh, resources or in conditions, then it is the responsibility of the state to ensure that every sections, every groups, every single individual have equal opportunity to develop his or her own faculties. So, the uh, fundamental premise of equality though is to treat everyone equally with similar attributes. However, how to treat them? Should there be the equality of uh, welfare or equality of resources or equality of capabilities? That is something we will discuss later in this chapter. So, even we agree that all the individuals having similar attributes should be treated equally, then how that treatment should be made is something is again a very complex or contested terrain. 
So, uh, the two aspect of equality is first equality of what? Is it equality of income or well being or capabilities? The second aspect of this concept of equality is how we can reconcile the principles of equality with other political values such as liberty, justice and efficiency. We will have one uh, lecture where we are going to discuss this connection between equality and liberty. So, these two aspect of equality of what in terms of income, well-being and capabilities. So, it is a distributional aspect of equality where uh, we want the distribution of something among uh, some people. Now, this uh, distributional aspect of equality requires decision about what this distribution is uh, about. Is it about income or is it about well-being or uh, capabilities? And all these three things are very different uh, from each other. And the other aspect is about uh, this uh, reconciling the demand of equality on the one hand and other political values such as liberty, justice, efficiency and so on on the other. Uh, however, the Alexis de Tocqueville, he writes that in democracies men prefers equality to liberty. So, in democracy that is based on the idea that all member has the equal right to participate in the decision making that affect their collective life, that individual life. So, this equal and free membership or participation in the public life or the collective life or in the collective decision making is something that um, defines democracies. And therefore, the idea of equal treatment, every member of the community is treated equally is something which is very central premise of a democracy and therefore, Tocqueville argues that in democracy people tend to prefer equality over liberty. However, he warns about the danger also. He writes that the charms of equality are felt the whole time and are within the reach of all. So, uh, no longer the equality is something which is the privilege of few or the selected few who are of certain literary or educational qualification or with some assets or property and so on. Now, the equality is something which is within the reach of every member of the community without any difference on the basis of their social, cultural and economic backgrounds. So, the charms of equality are felt the whole time and are within the reach of all. The novelist spirits appreciate them and the communist minds excel in them. So, so, once the idea of equality as an organizing principle for collective life or collective social and political life is uh, unfolded, it is hard to withdraw. That means, the new sections, new groups who are earlier excluded or marginalized will demand more and more equal share, more and more equal participation and so on. So, the novelist spirit will appreciate it, but also the communist people will uh, regard their uh, its value and will fight for it. So, the passion generated by equality is therefore, both strong and general. So, that is what uh, makes Tocqueville argue that equality is preferred to uh, liberty in a democracy. This while acknowledging the power of equality to generate passions among the groups and communities, Tocqueville also warn us about the danger of this excessive reliance on equality. And he argued that there is a need to maintain some kind of balance between equality and liberty. So, this uh, balance and how to uh, reconcile these two political value of equality and liberty will discuss in the, in the last lecture. So, it is true that as an ideal, equality is not only desirable, but it has a powerful resonance among the people who wish to escape the conditions of servitude and dependence. So, what makes the ideal of equality not just desirable, but is a rallying point for
for various communities and groups in the society is this urge or aspiration to escape from their existing conditions of servitude and dependence. So, if a society is hierarchical, the uh, consciousness or the uh, imagination of the groups who uh, lived in the condition of servitude or marginalization, they no longer want to live that life. And when they demand more or more equality, that leads to a kind of social transformation, to creation of a more inclusive or egalitarian society. So, this aspect of equality which transformed a hierarchical society into a more egalitarian, a more just society is something that is of paramount interest in any public discourse. And therefore, uh, even when uh, the parties or leaders or the ideologues differs about the content of what this equality is, they all will agree to the desirability of this concept of equality in modern uh, democracy, especially among the people or groups who uh, experience marginalization or exclusion such as in the case of women or uh, sexual minorities or uh, religious minorities or Dalits and uh, blacks or uh, minorities of uh, various kinds. So, for them the treatment of equality is fundamental for their existence or to have a sense of self-respect for uh, their own being and uh, equally respecting the uh, worth of the other individual. So, equality therefore is of uh, central importance in modern democracy. So, and this as an ideal equality is always gradual and progressive. So, here we need to make a difference between the idea of equality which is progressive or gradual. That means, once the inclusive or the egalitarian process of making a society more just or socially just starts, it takes time to make it perfectly just. In other words, there is no possibility of having absolute equality. That means, equality is not synonymous with uniformity. That is to say, all the members in the society should have same level of equal or same kind of household, with have same conception of what is good life and so on. So, this idea of um, absolute uh, equality is not only not just desirable, but also it may be detrimental to the pluralist or the um, diversity which defines the individual and the collective life and which is desirable also. So, equality is not something which obliterates uh, diversity, differences and so on. Equality is more about uh, creating the conditions and opportunity through which individuals no matter what his or her background is should be able to develop himself or herself to the maximum. So, that uh, and to realize that worth, that self worth, which should be not just for the individual to think or imagine, but also for the others to uh, respect that worth, moral worth of the individual, despite the differences that is uh, there in the social and the economic political sense. So, the equality tries to treat everyone equally without making a difference and also without having a kind of uniformity. So, the ideal for equality is not uniformity. Now, this is something which can be achieved gradually in a progressive manner, one step to the next and so on. And therefore, as society move from a small countable number of their member to a large society which is of billion population or say millions of populations and the members of which will never meet each other in their lifetime or never interact with each other face to face. And yet all of them realize that they are member of the same community and thereby carrying same level of rights and require equal treatment by the state or by the other member of that community. So, this realization is possible in a gradual progressive manner. It cannot be done through uh, one shot or in at one go. So, people uh, gradually 
realize their rights to be treated equally and this is a kind of continuum where one group after the other realize uh, that equality is of uh, significant for their uh, moral and political, social and economic progress. Let me give you one example. So, for a very long time, it is only the men who were regarded as having certain natural inalienable rights. Now, uh, for the women to get same kind of rights, they had to fight for a very long time. Similarly, those who were blacks or from racial minorities had to fight again for a very long time to get treated equally in their society, to be accepted by their society as one and same uh, member. So, uh, the equality in that sense formally even when we treat that all individuals um, are human and thereby rational, so must be treated equally. So, even if we accept it formally in the real practical sense to treat everyone despite of their uh, social, cultural, racial, economic backgrounds equally is something which is not achieved at one go. It requires the continuous process and people, community increasingly recognize these uh, necessity and make demands to the society, to the polity, to the state and so on. So, the most recent example in this continuum of uh, making more and more rights, more or more claims um, and about uh, uh, getting treated equally at par with other members of the society is the most example the queer, the bisexual, homosexual and so on, their demand of being treated equally is a kind of a reminder or reflection of the fact that equality is as a principle or an ideal is something which is always a gradual and progressive. So, even if law treats or define everyone must be treated equally, the actual practices of equal treatment requires a lot of uh, time and it is a progressive movement. So, it cannot be achieved at one go and absolute equality is neither desirable nor possible to achieve and therefore, there is the ideal of equity and egalitarianism which we will discuss in the second part of this lecture. So, equality is a more prescriptive term. Prescriptive term means that it has certain values, certain logic while it uh, claims to treat everyone equally. So, it is not about descriptive, it can be used as a descriptive term also. So, everyone of same moral uh, worth or everyone with same uh, degree or same weight and uh, same height or same age or sex and so on can be taken as equality in descriptive sense. But we are more concerned about equality in a prescriptive manner where it is loaded with certain normative concern. So, it is the prescriptive nature of equality that makes it normative and hence a contested concept as we have discussed. So, when we argue that men must be treated equally, it does not mean that they are in fact equal. So, this claim of treating everyone or men should be treated equally does not automatically imply that men are in fact equal. But we want that despite of differences, men must be treated equally, must carry certain normative or logical assumptions and that assumptions makes this whole conception of equality a contested concept. So, to support this claim, we must advance some logic or some normative justification. So, we despite our differences that may be physical, cognitive that is mental in size, race, color, caste or gender, despite of these visible or explicit differences are considered to be alike in some fundamental aspects. So, despite of such differences, we all are uh, considered or regarded alike in certain fundamental aspects. According to Bernard Williams, there are certain moral capabilities like capacity to feel pain 
or to suffer, capacity to experience affection for others and so on that are universal to everyone. So, the capacity, the cognitive exercise to have self-worth, to feel pain, to respect others, to get respected by the others is something which is not the exclusive right of few, but it is available universally to everyone. Now, does society or state recognize this universal aspect of uh, individuals despite of their visible differences on the basis of caste, class, race, gender, sex and so on. So, that is something which we need to take into account. So, it makes the equality not just a desirable, but a necessary ideal in organizing collective life, especially the modern uh, political life is based on this assumption of equality. So, pre-modern uh, societies have a moral order in which the hierarchy, whether based on divine right of the king and the hierarchy in the cosmos and therefore, the social hierarchy is justified and the arguments you may have heard that how a society can treat those equally which God has created unequally and so on. So, that kind of uh, logical uh, normative premise of pre-modern era is no longer valid in modern times. So, modern moral order is based on this fundamental premise of everyone being a human, therefore, rational must be treated equally. So, equality is the very premise of organizing modern social life. So, the idea of nation state, being the member of a nation state gives you certain rights and those rights are recognized by the state. So, for example, in India, we have fundamental rights that is available to all the members who is part of this uh, nation that is all the Indians. Despite of their social, economic, cultural, racial, religious background, they all are given those fundamental rights that does not discriminate them on the basis of their caste, class, gender and so on. So, uh, at least in the uh, theoretical or moral sense, the premise of equality is widely universally accepted. That means, there is no contestation. Now, how to ensure that these uh, equalities are not just there in the formal or legal sense, but actually people should be able to live a free and equal life there the conceptions or understanding differs that is about welfare and so on which we will discuss in a moment. So, there are two notions related to the concept of equality. First, which is formal or legal is somewhat uncontested as I have been arguing and uh, by and large accepted by all. So, formal and legal equality is something which is uncontested and by and large everyone accepted. The second which is substantial that is to say how people are actually treated and how to give them equal opportunities to compete with others and lead a moral dignified life, especially when the resources are limited. This second notion of equality, the substantial notion of equality makes this ideal of equality contested and open to multiple interpretation and which we will discuss in a few minutes. So, equality as a principle of correcting the unjust inequalities in society is typically a modern idea. In pre-modern time, the inequalities and hierarchies were considered as given, natural, as a reflection of the inequality in the cosmos and so on. But in modern times, the equality as a principle to correct unjust inequality is something which is very transformative. So, the idea of equality does not contemplate that all material goods should be equally distributed among all members of society. It rather means that everyone should be given equal opportunity for the development of their personal qualities and capacity. So, um, whether the equality is about equality of resources or equality of opportunity going beyond whether it is not just about equality of resources or equality of opportunity, but also about creating the conditions 
which enhance the capability of individual then he or she can develop himself or herself the way he or she likes to uh, be developed so these are some of the contentious issue that is related to the idea of equality so why equality in normative political philosophy equality is used in two ways foundational equality seeks to establish equality of all human being in moral sense it is said that people are equal by virtue of their rationality and it is also argued that a shared human characteristic is politically more significant than the apparent differences so whatever be the differences in terms of social cultural racial background of the individual the shared human characteristic is politically more profound than the visible apparent differences so the second ways of arguing about uh, equality is the distributional equality that believes that society should treat its member equally because all human beings are equal in their moral worth and deserve same or equal opportunity for their development so there is the kind of distributional aspect of equality uh, besides the foundational uh, equality now why do we need equality basically we need equality for the following reason first equal satisfaction of basic needs so there are certain primary goods or certain basic needs which is required by everyone like right to food right to health care right to long life or healthy life and so on so there cannot be a universal uh, definition of what those basic needs are because it is subject to change depending upon the society uh, or the context or the uh, historical age in terms of technological and other advancement so what is regarded luxury today may not be regarded luxury for tomorrow uh, for the future necessary it may be regarded as the basic needs but nonetheless whatever be that basic needs uh, are it must be made available to everyone in the society so we need a uh, equality to ensure that the basic needs of everyone are equally satisfied the second we need equality to ensure that every member of the communities have the same status there is no uh, differences between high and low high born or low born one uh, section of society or the other section of society male or female and so on so uh, we need equality to ensure that all the members are part of the same species that is humanity or the human being and therefore is rational so must have the same status so we need equality to ensure that everyone has the same status the third equal opportunity for self development so the opportunity is something which we may take for granted but it is absolutely necessary for individual to develop Uh, to the full uh, level of his or her potentialities so many individuals groups in the society were denied that opportunity to develop themselves to their full uh, level to develop their skill to develop their capabilities and so on so therefore we need equality to ensure that every member or all the groups in the society have equal opportunity for their self development or uh, progress finally we need equality to ensure or to develop fraternity that is about the social cohesiveness so a society especially uh, which transcend the limits of kinship blood ties or direct face to face relationship the large heterogeneous diverse plural society requires e- equality to develop a sense of solidarity a sense of fraternity among the members so in nation state you uh, take the examples of patriotism or less patriotic national or anti national and so on such debates is also a reflection of uh, the looseness or somewhat inbuilt cracks in the social solidarity and the social fraternity in the society so to make the society more cohesive and develop a strong uh, bonding in the psychological emotional sense 
to develop that we need equality to build a society which will be more cohesive and more strong with every member having a sense of free and equal membership in the society and the equal worth that is respected not just by their own assessment of their self but by the others in the society as well. So, we need equality for all these reasons. Now, the dimensions of equality, one is the legal or formal equality. Uh, the principle of equality was first put forward as the demand for legal equality that you uh, may be knowing by rule of law, which does not discriminate it between or among the individuals. So, it grants equal legal status to all members of a political community irrespective of their birth, physical or mental capacities or other differences. So, legal equality implies equality before law or equal protection of law. So, this legal or formal equality talks about treating everyone equally without discriminating on the basis of their uh, birth or their physical or mental capacities and so on. The second is political equality which is mostly expressed in the idea of one man, one vote, one vote, one value. So, this organizing idea of modern political life, where in the democracy you have right to participate, not just in um, electing your representative, but also yourself getting elected for the electoral positions or the uh, positions of representatives. These are not denied to any member of the society only because of their place of birth or their physical or uh, such capacities or if they have a property or so on. So, you are not discriminated against on the basis of the place of birth, your race, your caste, your gender from fighting the election for the representative post and also in the electing your uh, representative. So, the political equality is about giving everyone equal participation in the political life of that community in terms of electing their representatives and also themselves getting elected for the political or representative positions. Now, these are not denied to any individual only on the grounds of their birth, uh, their caste, their religion, their gender and etcetera. So, this idea of one man, one vote, one vote, one value. So, no matter what the education, what what is the property, uh, what is the status of the individual in the society or in the economy, when he or she votes, the value of that votes is one and same. Whether it is the prime minister or the rickshaw puller, whether it is the professor or a student or a male or a female or a Hindu or a Muslim or Christians or so on. So, the political equality is a kind of equalizer in a sense that it requires everyone to participate in the public life of the community as a free and equal member. Now, uh, the socio-economic equality is extension of this legal, formal and political notion of equality. So, this is the subsequent stage in discourse about equality. So, the achievement of formal, legal and political equality is followed by the demands for more and more social economic equality. In other words, it is about the equality of conditions. So, even when you have the same rights, you may not be able to realize those rights if your conditions are different. So, in the absence of socio-economic equality, political and legal equality make little sense. So, you see in the elections, the corrupt practices, uh, parties buying votes and people are willingly selling their right to vote for a party or for a leader who can give them the right value of their vote in terms of money and so on. So, the role of money, power and so on in the election is reflection of this absence of social and economic equality which is actually detrimental for the uh, effectiveness of uh, legal and political equality. So, every member is free or equal in legal and political sense, but in actual sense he or she is not equal because he or she lacks the 
resources or the conditions where he or she can make decision freely, independently and in the autonomous manner. So, socio-economic equality requires the reduction of inequality that is about the conditions. Some people are born in a particular conditions and that conditions create certain impediments for his or her growth. So, the social economic equality requires that those conditions of inequalities must be reduced. So, now what is regarded as inequalities is something that is determined by the prevalent concept of social justice. So, social justice in India in that sense one aspect of equality is about the preferential treatment. So, those societies or uh, those sections of society which are historically and economically marginalized and excluded from the mainstream, should we give that section of society certain privilege, certain preferential treatment which we also call reservation for say SC, STs and OBC. Does that help in creating a society more equal? Of course, on the face of it many people will argue that equality is about treating everyone equally. So, how we justify reservation or preferential treatment to certain groups and certain communities? How far that lead to create a society which is more just, more equal, more egalitarian and so on. So, but uh, to understand that, to explain that, we need to understand the conditions of uh, different sections in the society for which the state as a public institution requires certain preferential treatment for them to give them the equal opportunity or the equal chance to compete with others, to compete with the rest of the society. So, however, what those conditions are can be determined by the prevalent concept of uh, social justice in that society and it differs from age to age and society society to as I was saying that in different is different conception of those conditions of social economic equality are defined differently. So, socio-economic equality insists on a progressive extension of social benefits to the weaker, excluded, marginalized and underprivileged sections of the society and regarding the formal uh, legal political equality in absence of social equality as hollow or meaningless, it advocates the transition from a formal to more substantive notion of equality. So, that is the idea of social and economic equality which extend the idea of equality beyond merely a political, legal or formal uh, ideal to actually create the conditions of equality in the society for everyone to realize and develop himself or herself. Now, scholars have broadly identified three forms of equality and that we have uh, been discussing. So, if equality is understood as a distributional concepts, what are those forms or what are those equality that should be distributed? Whether it is equality of opportunity or resources or capabilities, we are going to discuss it one by one and we will also discuss one other forms of equality which we call complex equality as advocated by Michael Wolzer. So, equality of uh, welfare is basically argued by utilitarian philosophers who believe that the search of human being is happiness and society must ensure that the every member in the society must have the scope and resources for uh, leading a good life by that they mean a happy life and happy life is the yardstick through which one can judge or assess the effectiveness of public policy. So, those policies which help individual maximize his or her happiness or good life, that policy is good, that policy is uh, desirable. In other words, the idea of the greatest good of the greatest number. So, the yardstick to judge a public policy is on the basis of whether it enhances the happiness of the members in the society or not. So, the utilitarian philosophers have generally argued that the project of distributional equality requires distribution of welfare and this welfare is understood as both happiness and preferences or satisfactions. So, the happiness or what is happiness, what is preference or satisfaction for different individuals, different groups in the society, a state should not uh, decide it. It should provide the conditions and resources for them to exercise their preferences or to maximize their happiness and so on. So, it focuses less on how much resources an individual is getting. 
but whether or not such resources are instrumental in securing for him or her a level of satisfaction or happiness that is equal to everyone else in the society. So, for them the yardstick for judging a policy is not just about actual value or actual resources that an individual is getting or not. For them the yardstick for distributional aspect of equality is to ensure whether the individual an individual may have different preferences, different choice whether such choice, so somebody may like to travel in a car or somebody may like a bicycle and uh, the happiness for both of them differ from each other and yet their preferences should be treated equally or not. So, the idea here is that the individuals in the society are able or have the opportunity to exercise their freedom or happiness in the same way as other members do or exercise. So, uh, here the focus is more about ensuring the happiness or satisfaction of the member than the actual distribution of the resources. Now, however, treating different preferences as we mentioning somebody treat preferring bicycle over a car is unequal preferences or choices. Now, if these different preferences or choices are treated equally, it may lead to a moral and ethical objections and it may not promote the desire end of fairness or self-respect among the members of that community and it may also turn out to be detrimental to the cause of social cohesiveness and the fraternity that equality aspire to achieve. Now, the second aspect of this distributional aspect of equality is equality of resources. So, uh, this view is most commonly associated with of John Rawls, Ronald Dworkin or Eric Rakowski where we find that their emphasis is on the distribution of the primary goods. So, every member of the uh, society should be given uh, same level of primary goods and it should be available to them equally. Now, what they do with that primary goods that should be left for the individual to decide. So, the role of the state or the public institution in this conception of equality of resources is to distribute the public goods or the basic goods or primary goods equally to everyone. Now, equality of resources holds that the distributional scheme treats people as equals when it distributes or transfer so that no further transfer would leave their share of that resources more equal. So, the equal uh, distribution is very crucial in terms of equality of resources. So, this conception of equality lays emphasis on the centrality of state responsibility toward remedying the unequal circumstances among the pe people. So, Rawls we will discuss in his a theory of justice. So, if the people are treated differently, so the idea should be that everyone should be treated equally, everyone should have the equal opportunity or free and equal opportunity to develop himself or herself. But if there is a need to differ from this equal principle, then it must have certain justification. So, the state has the responsibility to rectify certain conditions, but that rectification must be justified also. Now, the next concept is equality of capabilities. So, according to Amart Sen, the major objective of the distributional conception of equality should be equalizing people's capabilities instead of emphasizing on the distribution of resources or income. So, uh, Sane is arguing more about creating the conditions of capabilities rather than focusing on merely redistributing the resources or the income among the people. So, in contrast to the equality of resources, Sane argue, argues that emphasis should be given more on enhancing people capabilities and thereby making them more equal or free. He acknowledges the role of a state in making public policies such as regarding education and health care that increases individual capabilities to participate in the collective life of his or her community as free and equal member. So, the equality principle requires a state involvement in making policies especially regarding say a health care or education which should be made available for everyone, which should be accessible to everyone, which enhance 
their capabilities. So, it is not just enough to distribute the resources, but also to ensure how far that resources or the public intervention enhance their capabilities and a state has a responsibility to ensure that everyone should have those qualities or those services which enhances their capabilities such as education or healthcare. So, the capabilities or equality of capabilities is more uh, significant than merely the redistribution of resources. Sen also put forward or put emphasis on the conditions of inequality in his analysis and this inequality requires one to understand the diversity that exists in the society. So, all the members in the society do not have the same level of needs and that uh, needs is determined by their internal as well as the external requirements or conditions of existence. So, he write that we are deeply diverse in our internal characteristics such as age, gender, general abilities, particular talents, proneness to illness and so on. So, an old or a young or a child has different requirements in terms of health care and so on. So, uh, it cannot be a uniform equal services that should be applicable to everyone. So, internally uh, the human beings are very diverse especially in terms of age, gender, their general abilities or someone having a special or particular talents on about something or their proneness to illness requires different demands or different needs or the external circumstances such as the ownership of assets social backgrounds or environmental predicaments and so on. So, these diversity of human existence requires diverse needs to be met. So, when formulating the policies or social policies, we also need to take into account the different needs or the social diversity in the society and thus he argues that social policy must be attuned to the social diversity that is the needs of different sections of the society which vary from one section to other depending upon their internal and external conditions of existence. So, that is the uh, third approach. The final is the complex equality which is argued by Michael Walger who give uh, the idea of complex equality and he argues that it is not enough to distribute the resources or goods. Rather, emphasis should be on the creation of public or social goods. The conception or meaning of goods differ from society to society and context to context. Therefore, he argues about the plurality of distributive arrangements. So, there should not be one singular arrangement for the distribution of primary goods. So, first uh, Michael Wolger extend this understanding of primary goods or social goods as not something which is universally accepted or there should be a singular arrangement for the distribution or redistribution of that public goods. Michael Walder is emphasizing more on the social creation or social conception of good and what is primary goods. The meanings of which differs from society to society and is uh, context to context and therefore, there is a need for different arrangements or plural arrangements for the redistribution of primary goods. So, the basic idea is that all distributions are just and unjust related to the social meanings of good at stakes. So, this approach focus on the social meanings of goods and plurality of the sphere of justice. It means that no citizens standing in one sphere or with regard to one social good can be undercut by standing in some other spheres with regard to some other goods. So, it establishes a set of relationship such that domination of certain groups over certain goods is impossible. So, there is a kind of uh, different spheres where uh, the domination of one over the other becomes impossible when peoples are treated in their unique different existence depending upon their requirements and therefore, more uh, plural arrangement for redistribution rather than one singular uh, uh, distribution. So, uh, finally, the equity, equality and egalitarianism, this we can discuss also in the next lecture, but uh, very briefly the idea of equity and egalitarianism, now it is 
or more desirable terms than the notion of equality or say absolute equality. So, people talk more about equity, the principle of equity which is rooted in equality, but a bit different from the idea of equality and its different conception and the egalitarianism. In the political struggles or social movements, these terms equity and egalitarianism is more in use than say the idea of equality. So, although their conceptions are rooted in the ideals of equality in the sense that these enhance the prospect of making a society more equal, however, these are different from the idea of absolute equality. So, egalitarianism holds that all human beings have equal social and political rights and it regards equality as the basic principle and holds that all people are equal in fundamental moral worth. So, the idea that connects the principle of equity and egalitarianism is deeply embedded in this idea of equality that is all individuals are morally equal. Uh, their moral, uh, political, social, economic worth are one and same. So, therefore, they must be treated equally. So, egalitarianism holds that equality is always just, only e inequalities need a uh, justification. For example, John Rawls treated liberty and equality as the basis, a basic principle of justice and sought to explore the conditions under which inequalities could be treated as just. So, in their arguments basically say for a reservation that I have given as an example in this lecture before. So, everyone should have the equal opportunity to get employed, but if some communities are treated uh, preferentially or given preferential treatment, then this difference or preferential treatment must be justified. So, and uh, it must uh, justify this idea of creating the society more just or more egalitarian and so on. So, egalitarianism upholds that system where the poor and the weak, it upholds that system where the poor and the weak equally find opportunity for their advancements and development along with the rich and the strong. So, there should not be any differences or hierarchy among the rich or the strong on the one hand poor and the weak on the other hand and their prospect to develop in their lives. So, opportunity should be equal to both. So, equality of outcome is the ultimate goal of egalitarianism and not the starting point that is the procedurally how you start is not as important as what you achieve even if you have the difference principle, even if you have principles which treats people differently or have preferential treatment and so on. So, we need to make a differentiate between the equality of outcome and equality of opportunity. So, equality of outcome implies equal distribution of rewards such as income, wealth and other social goods. It is to ensure result regardless of the starting point and natural ability through social programs of positive discriminations in favor of underprivileged or the marginalized groups. So, uh, the emphasis here is about the equality of the outcome. So, starting point or the natural ability of the individuals or groups may differ, but they should have the opportunity to bring them on the same footing or the equal footing through preferential treatment or difference treatment is uh, desirable or even required to make the society more just, more egalitarianism. The equality of opportunity is most commonly associated with the liberal democratic tradition which talks about the procedural part. It means in principle that access to important social institution shall be open to all on the universalist grounds, especially by the achievement and uh, the talent. So, it focuses on the opportunity through which individual can achieve certain status, uh, socio-economic, political in the society and that should depend on their talent, their merit. The outcome principle is different where it treats everyone equally and ensure that despite of their different backgrounds or natural ability, they should have the same level of playing field in the collective life uh, in the society. So, we will continue this discussion on equity and egalitarianism in our next lecture. For today's lecture, whatever I have covered, you can refer to some of these books which is mentioned here, Asoka Acharya, 
equality from the Rajiv Bhargava and Asukarya's book. Then uh, these are some of the books like John Drezek, Hoffman, William Bernard, uh, Richard Anderson, John Hoffman, Steve Hansen, and Scheffler or uh, Macaulay you can uh, refer to. So these are some of the text which you can refer for today's lecture. Thank you for listening.